So that brings us to part two of the talk, which is understanding AP research results from Dr. Wendy Chung's study. And this was the first uh, picture from the first AP conference in June 2019. Now, unbeknownst to me, an AP community had formed and had managed to engage with clinical, the clinical and scientific community. Um, and I just want to take a moment to say what an extraordinary feat this was. Like, never in my wildest dreams did I think when, when Googling uh, AP or inverted duplicate deleted AP that I would find this accomplishment. So my hat and my heart like really do go out to Vina and Dr. Wendy Chang and everyone else who is involved in this endeavor. It is an extraordinary achievement. So Vina, can you just tell us a little bit about the, the meeting? Okay, so um, this is very much uh, a mom, myself, um, thinking about how we can try to understand what the prognosis looks like for kids like my daughter. And um, I was fortunate enough to meet Dr. Wendy Chung, who was my daughter's clinical geneticist. So she was her doctor and um, we didn't have answers. And so um, at that moment, I thought, well, try to fund some research. And it was a really clear exchange of, you need to find more families and kids affected by this so that we can understand what this is gonna look like and help find some answers to the many questions that all of you have. So lo and behold, we did. I mean, the excitement from people impacted by this was so strong and so powerful that people joined forces all around the world to fly into New York City and I feel so fortunate to have um, been able to facilitate and coordinate a lot of this and get scientists excited because of each of your excitement to be a part of this. You know, I think that that energy fuels each other. And so scientists and doctors immediately say, there's people impacted that really want to drive this. Um, okay, count me in. And so it's just really exciting that, um, even currently, we're just building on that momentum that started um, from this picture when a smaller percentage of those that are affected today were starting to get involved. And um, a lot of the hugs and tears, we learned so much from each other and we're gonna continue doing that. So um, I feel really lucky and I want each of you to know that, you know, this patient leadership board is really so um, motivated to continue doing things like this. Thank I'll you. send it back to you, Faye. Yeah. Brilliant. And here it is, the diagram I have spent the last 10 years wondering about. This is figure one in Wendy Chung's study. So at the top in this red box, you can see this is the 8P arm. And it's um it's sort of spread out all through here. Uh, each line is representing at least one patient. Um, deletions are shown in red and duplications in blue. So some of the inverted duplicated deleted, inverted duplicate delete AP heroes have had, have very similar genetic disorders. So we're just represented by one line. And let's just consider the deletions shown in this section in the box for the next few slides. Now, the Chung Lab publication states in the supplementary figure, that the commonly deleted interval among 49 individuals was the distal 6.7 megabasis. So if you enter that region into the University of California Santa Cruz genome browser, you will see how big that section is um, in the red box at the left-hand side of the AP arm. So it's, it's, I don't know, what's that? Maybe like a fifth of the, maybe less, maybe a sixth of the chromosome, okay? Um, and when you scroll down the web page, you can see all the potential genes in this 6.7 megabase region. So only some code for proteins. And one of those genes, CSMD1, is actually happens to be the largest gene in humans. Um, it's in that region, and I've circled it here as an example. Now, the Chung study stated that there are 14 protein coding genes within the commonly deleted interval. So three of these genes within this interval, DLGAP2, CSMD1, and ANGPT2, were identified as possibly being the proteins responsible for 
to some of the effects we see in our AP heroes when there is only one chromosome coding for them. Now, none of these three genes had an OMIM disease association, and um, that would be an OMIM disease association is a catalog of human gene and genetic disorders and traits. So we know that the lower four AP heroes in the image above, so these are the ones who literally just have that AP deletion in one chromosome, um, we know that they are affected by their AP deletions. So despite none of those, those three genes having an omen disease association, we know having only one copy um, of that region is not enough. And here's a summary of the clinical characterizations of these four distal, delete, uh, distal AP heroes. So you can see, you know, there's musculoskeletal dis, uh, issues, there's um, brain imaging abnormality, neurological findings, and this is in part in summary of table one. This is a section of table one in, in the publication. So what's causing the issues, right? And let's consider this is a string diagram of CSMD1 at the center. Um, and this is just one of those proteins identified. It shows us all the known and predicted proteins which may be interacting with CSMD1. Um, it could be any of these proteins uh, which are actually causing the medical and behavioral issues we see in our AP heroes. And of course, if you look at inverted duplicated deleted AP heroes, it gets even more complicated. So this 1.1 megabase region, um, there are, is the, it's, this is the commonly duplicated interval, and there are 66 protein coding genes within this section. Um, and here we have the variable interval, so clearly variable amongst uh, the AP heroes, the inverted duplicated deleted AP heroes, so some will have this area duplicated and others will not up here. Um, and within this section, there's 114 protein coding genes. So when you look at a summary of all of this, so it kind of gives you an indication, everyone pretty much has almost everyone neurological findings. Um, there's a good deal of seizures, brain imaging abnormalities. We see cardiovascular findings, neurobehavior issues gastrointestinal issues, very common, um, musculoskeletal issues, et cetera. So it gives you an idea of the sort of challenges the AP heroes will face. And as a parent to an AP hero, this information can help us consider what issues our kids might face. And if we get to the point where we have concerns that we don't think our health professionals are taking seriously, referring them to this may help them decide if a referral to a consultant or a specialist is, is necessary. Now, the information in the Chang study has tons more potential to help. It's housed here on the Neurodevelopmental Disorder Copy Number Variant Portal at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. This will enable any researcher from the um, any researcher access to the de-identified data from the publication. So say a scientist is studying a gene that is located on chromosome eight um, in a region that is frequently deleted. Well, using this portal as a tool might help the researcher to understand the impact of the loss of the gain of their gene of interest and, may have that and what it may have on the AP hero and help them understand their own experiments a little bit better. <laughs> 